Right, I'm going to get started. And getting people to be quiet in a Wikipedia session is almost impossible, unless you make a joke about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hi, I'm Tom Morris. I'm an admin on English Wikipedia and Wikinews and a bunch of other places, and I edit dozens of wikis. Um, as I said yesterday, I'm a proud and out wiki slut. Um, so today I'm going to talk about Wikipedia, Wikimedia governance, uh, which is a something I'm not that involved in. I try and steer clear of it as best as possible so I can spend more time doing this little thing we have to do occasionally called edit the wiki. Um, but I do try and keep abreast of what's going on in the chapter and the movements and all that kind of stuff. I'm on a few mailing lists and I attend IRC office hours sessions and um, things like that, even if I personally don't really have a taste for it. So I'm going to show you a few interesting things I found out. Um, and uh, what I've kind of learned in the process. And to make this easy, I'm going to use templates throughout my talk, the sort of templates we would stick on articles or inline at the end of sentences, a bit like citation needed, except for, for other things. So the first one is buzzword. Um, now, uh, I actually created this template on English Wikipedia. Um, it's, you put it in line to say, this previous sentence contains buzzwords. It's a bit like citation needed. Um, I'm probably the only person who uses it. Um, so uh, the chief um, uh, you know, promoter of buzzwords has to be the India programs. This is an India program on Meta. Um, let's have a look at some of their, their nice sentences. Um, so the, the India program, uh, one of their goals is to support outre outreach activities to improve impact measured in a larger number of editors, new editors. So I changed this sentence to support outreach activities to increase the number of new editors, which I think makes a lot more sense. Um, I have this weird hobby of going through and making foundation reports readable. Um, <laughs> the reason I don't like the word impact is because the word impact is what you use when you hit somebody with one of these. Um, or indeed when you drive into somebody with a car. Um, so to have more impact than getting people to edit a wiki, say, I'd suggest that the Foundation could consider this as a potential outreach opportunity. Uh, next year, have it so that every administrator on any wiki uh, will be given a large baseball bat with the <laughs> word banned uh, as a little metal embossed bit on it. So you can just smack people over the head and they can have banned. <laughs> uh, this, is, this has to be swag for next year's Wikimania. So uh, impact is, as I said, what happens when cars smash into one another or raving psychopathic Wikipedia administrators get too pissed off with Arbcom and smash everything in sight. Uh, so there's a much simpler word, which is just effect. Well, that happens too. <laughs> Some of these sentences have no actual... I have no idea what this sentence means. Initiate <laughs> offline pilot in one major concentration of schools slash colleges slash universities. What's a concentration? This is generally what you do when you're heavily focused on something, right? But is it, in, is it in a school, or is it in a college, or is it in one school, or is it in multiple schools, but only in schools and not colleges and universities? I have no clue what this is supposed to mean. Um, if I don't understand this, and I have God knows how many degrees, of, uh, years of very expensive education, how the f bloody hell is somebody in India going to understand what this means if they don't speak English? Um... So, uh, I, yeah, I don't know what this means. Here's an even better one. Gender gap. Much has been written about the gender gap in Wikipedia projects. India programs must leverage the unique opportunity that exists in India to actively bridge this gap. This must drive all aspects of India programs. I rewrite this to say, all outreach work done by the India project must try and increase female participation. Um, because that's actually understandable. Um, the way, uh, one way you will not improve female participation is to write like a moron. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's not re a requirement. Outreach does not require you to, to write like you're a business uh, school graduate. It just doesn't. Um, this was from the Brazil program. If this pilot is most successful, we will see indications towards R, that's supposed to be O-U-R, goals in the following ways. This is written by a foundation staff member who I will not name. <laughs> do they speak English? If they don't speak English, do they speak Portuguese? I don't know. <laughs> this is an even better one. As this is a strategy, it does not need to have smart targets. They will come later after the strategy. 
I'm waiting for them to have dumb targets. So this is the, uh, this is really picking on. This is because I was sitting next to Faye this morning. I thought, ooh, I need to have something to take the Mickey out of my own chapter. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I'm strongly hoping that Wikimedia UK will uh, encourage dumb targets. Uh, but uh, well, um, that I think Fowler personally. <laughs> So um, the next one is bullshit. Uh, I'm sorry, I may be infringing the friendly spaces policy here. Um, so I, I picked some nice examples this time. This is from the board elections a couple of years ago. This is a, a character called B9 Hummingbird Hovering. He said, he personally favors the synchronicity of Google and Firefox as conduits of my iteration of projects and favors strategic alliances and partnerships with collectives and communities of shared values and like minds. I got as far as conduits of my iteration, <laughs> and my brain just got to... I mean, I must have not had enough caffeine while I'm reading that. I just... I don't know. Some people... Th what's next? If there was anything that could, with the most evil interpretation possible, be considered in any circumstance contrary to our mission, or even orthogonal to it, <laughs> my absolute red line would be to demand that the string be cut, or we would not take the money. <laughs> this character... You may also know from Wik uh, the Wikimedia L list, he posts an enormous amount of stuff. Uh, that's uh, UC, uh, I forget what the rest of it is, UC Hulv, uh, I, I can't even pronounce his name. Uh, but there's no, and there is absolutely no reason you should ever use the word orthogonal. <laughs> Let's just, we have the word separate, and we have the word independent, and they do a perfectly good job. There's no need to ever say the word orthogonal, unless you're, you know, explaining physics or something. I don't know, just no. Scare quotes. Now, scare quotes is when you do um, I, I actually, I wish I had my camera with me this morning because Sue was doing it. I was like, I could so put that in my presentation. Um, now, uh, uh, we don't actually have a warning template for this in English Wikipedia like we do for buzzword and citation needed, which is a shame. But we've got the, uh, I found this one. This is, this is from uh, Florence. I thought it would be nice to offer a little update with regards to the organization, in particular from a person <laughs> perspective. <laughs> I was waiting for the, for the foundation to give me an update from the Labrador perspective, personally. <laughs> uh, maybe the cyborg perspective. Um, what the... Th <laughs> this is where it gets a bit more serious. So, unnavigable discussions. Who has ever here read a discussion related to the foundation or to chapters, and you've got about halfway through and thought, I have absolutely no idea what they are talking about. <laughs> like, I don't even know broadly which country I'm in. Right. How about we discuss the Funds Dissemination Committee? <laughs> I mean, I could have picked so many others, but, you know, it's pretty important, right, how we disseminate funds around the Wikimedia movement to chapters, to organization. Now, you'd think this would be a pretty important thing to, to, to understand. So I, I went to M, Meta, Funds Dissemination Committee. Um, and, you know, I don't follow this governance stuff too closely, but I kind of like to understand in case, you know, I want to go and help with a GLAM project or something. This is one of the headings from the meta page on the FDC. Issues to be resolved in the FDC design process. Why such an elaborate process? Nowhere on the meta page does it actually explain what the Funds Dissemination Committee is attempting to do, but it does tell me in the header that it is an elaborate process. <laughs> I feel so confident in the future of this movement. I, I really... Uh, Anyway, so uh, eventually I had a discussion on IRC with Sue Gardner, and I actually worked out what it was. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this means that money goes donor to Wikimedia Foundation, to Funds Dissemination Committee, to chapter slash eligible organization, to people who need it. This may not be the best thing I've, I've ever written. It's on IRC, whatever. But why couldn't somebody at the foundation write a sentence of this form right at the beginning of all of the discussions about the Funds Dissemination Committee and said, this is broadly what we're trying to do. All the discussions flow from this fundamental premise that this is what we're talking about. I don't know. Instead, we get sentences like this, or paragraphs like this. A question was raised about who should be responsible for translation, whether it should be the EE or whether it should be the, WM, or the staff of the WMF. Given that EEs will be organizations with capacities to do or engage community support in doing translation, this may be best so that they can be responsible for ensuring the translated application is a true representation of their proposal. The challenge, is that a true rep uh, the challenge is that much of the discussion on the application should be done in the native language of the EE. 
I don't know what an EE is, and nowhere in this document does it tell me what an EE is. If anyone knows... <laughs> right, okay. This would be a useful thing to have on Meta. <laughs> right, so that's basically a chapter. <laughs> um, this is a template I think we need. What? <laughs> This is my reaction after reading this headline on the Wikimedia blog. Nine out of ten Wikipedians continue to be men. With, with all due respect to our transgender editors, and I am a member of the LGBT Outreach Project, I think gender reassignment surgery might be an expensive way to get more female editors. Um, this could have been solved with some copy editing. Vision. So this is where it becomes actually important. This is, of course, the wonderful Wikimedia Foundation vision. Imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. That's our commitment. Well, how can they? How can they if we write like this? I can't understand it. How the f bloody hell can anyone else understand it? And we've got this mission, and this is the only time I'm ever going to be able to approvingly quote I Margaret... <laughs> so <laughs> as a fully confirmed and card carrying member of the left wing pinko conspiracy I get to approvingly quote Margaret Thatcher here human relationships depend on communication bad writing is a barrier to communication if we write like this we can't communicate with the 280 however many languages we're in now um, there seem to be like an extra one every week now um, how the hell are they going to understand what an EE is if we never actually explain what an EE is? Um, it's one thing to demand that the, uh, that the speakers of Burmese or Estonian you know, communicate their needs to the rest of the movement in a language they don't understand, like English. It's quite another that they actually understand what onboarding or outcome metrics are, when most people in English don't understand what onboarding or outcome metrics are. Uh, there's another reason we should do this, which is that it actually forges a bond between the foundation and the community of people who actually edit the articles. Um, this is the Wikipedia Manual of Style on English Wikipedia. Um, it's to, the key words here are the goal, sorry, it's not an impact measure or an outcome measure, is to make the encyclopedia easier and more intuitive to use. If we write like this, we might be able to do so. So my plea is, Find foundation staff people, or chapter people, or even yourself, and when they are speaking in a language you do not understand, do not feel afraid to tell them you don't understand what the hell they're talking about and to rewrite it until they do. <laughs> Go forth. <laughs> we need a Wikipedia version. <laughs> I actually did have a look at some statistics and General Electric uh, rewrote all their staff instruction manuals a few years ago um, and as a, as a result of it they l um, saved about $400,000 a year as a result of actually writing in language that their employees can understand rather than in bureaucrat speak. Um, if uh, the, the basic kind of thing I'm thinking is well a lot of people will go to work or go to school, and they will deal with language like this on a daily basis. They don't like doing it. Like I, I've read, you know, I used to be involved in. You know, like my previous job was doing government stuff, and we, I got documents that just made me want to smash my head against the desk in frustration. Um, the thought of coming home after a day of reading a document like that, and then spending hours and hours answering and emails on Wikimedia L that basically write in the same language fills me with horror and is a very, very good disincentive for actually doing so. So that's kind of the motivation. Sven?
when we, we have this problem not just at the foundation level and at the chapters level, but it, it, it's been one of the themes of this um, um, of this Wikimania in large part because of the, um, the, the what do you call it, volunteer researcher person that they have on the system. Um, someone who uh, the what? Uh, the help project we're, stuff. We're, we're paying, the foundation is paying someone to read and help people. Yes, uh, the WAP is. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, that, that Peter Coombe, sorry. Part, I, that, partly because that has been talked about so much, it is, it is now in everyone's um, um, uh, general field of view that large parts of our documentation are completely and utterly illegible. Um, we have known this for several years. Do you have recommendations about how we go about fixing it? Uh, yes, uh, being bold and giving people baseball bats. No, um, I don't know. Uh, the help project stuff is really hard because the problem is that there's just an enormous, massive ball of it and starting to unpick it all is, I don't know, confusing and hellish. That's mm. <laughs> I wouldn't want to subject them to that. Actually, simple is more complicated than that. I know that sentence makes no sense. <laughs> like it. It's not even a question of simple, it's a question of precision and finish. Mm. In fact, reading simple ones often makes it more complicated. Mm -hmm. That custom of adding more words to, to straightforward English words is much harder for people to understand. For example, to change the word understand is easily able to be looked up in a dictionary. To a phrase like pick up on is impossible. Those are simple words. By changing proper English verbs into whole phrases, which is an American tradition thing, to changing understand to things like pick up on or get with or all of those very long things is much more complex, so especially for can I, can I, can I, So can I, can, I, can I give an example of this? Um, uh, a while back, we, um, when the help project, help reform project stuff was in its infancy, um, there was a plan to use uh, readability metrics, which are things like Fleshkin said and Smog and these various things to, to analyze how complicated they are. And the problem is, is that actually you can have very long words which are completely uh, understandable and very, very short words which, I mean, who here knows what the word ontic is? Good, none of you, oh, you do. Any, okay, so we've got a few philosophy graduates, but everybody else, I bet you don't know what the word ontic means. Do you know what the word simplify means? Yeah, so simplify is a more complicated word than ontic, grammatically speaking. It is, you know, there's more syllables, it's a longer word. Yeah, um, so using shorter, simpler words might actually be more complicated than... Yeah, so actually the only way we can really solve this is to apply brains to documents, um, which means we need to have humans attached to brains. Uh, we can't just fire off scripts and say, oh, this is a complicated document, we need to fix this one first. No, we need to look at all of them and fix, it, fix them all kind of there. There's not really any. Not quite right in that you could use an automated method to identify the good candidates. Sure, yeah. You, uh, yeah. Well, I, I was just thinking that one of the other ways uh, to do simplification is if there were some kind of way to check if a sentence had more than um, four commas that you could look at. I mean, 
Yeah, stuff yeah. from um, uh, English and um, translated into Spanish mm. or Portuguese or I'm, I'm confused. I think he's Finnish or something. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. Actually, I, no, I think Alvaro is, Alvaro is, a, is actually a Spanish. That's his, his nickname. Or, or, or it yeah. might be, but yeah. whatever it is, um, I, I've seen things from um, uh, comparable articles written in English. Mm. Ben's already spent, so, uh, Zika? Uh, yes, Tom, it's a, uh, it's a very big problem you are addressing. Do I remember the so-called uh, movement world group? Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, there was absolutely no response to it, and I believe it's the same, it was the same for everybody to read the text, and mm. nothing sticks in our brains from this. So, but so... Can I just butt in on the Movement Rolls project? The best thing about the Movement Rolls project is that they wanted to have, they wanted to learn accountabilities, plural, not accountability, from the Olympics movement, yeah. <laughs> which just boggles my brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Sorry. Is, is much bigger. I, I, I also consider lists and uh, mailing lists and other mm. communication forms, and we have a lot of noise in there, like little jokes and blah blah and my mother in Boston and so on. That's part of a problem, English slang. So uh, I don't want to make to uh, stress out all the words in your Yes, guilty as charged. Like mumbo jumbo, I believe it's even offensive to at least some of our uh, congressionalists. Uh, jargon is a problem and cultural references. I just told you in Berlin, Zugaga said, I want to speak in plain, plain English or easy English so everybody can understand me. And the second sentence that he said, um, the last a few months have been my winter of discontent. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are of a certain age and you have been in Britain in that time, you may know uh, what that means and uh, how the winter of discontent ended. Yes. I'd like to give a last example from Wikipedia. Yes. I learned by Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> we, had, we had a problem with the, we have a glossary on the German Wikipedia, mm. Glossar, and on the talk page I said we could change that to word list. This would be much more comprehensible for most people. And there was no uh, reaction and I simple, simply changed the name. And there, then there came a lot of protests saying like, but glossary is, is, is such, such a normal word. Everybody knows it is nearly colloquial. It's in every every textbook, but word list. No, I don't think that word exists. When I said this to my wife, she's a teacher, a school teacher. She said, "Oh my God! In what is what kind of world are those people living? What kind of world are those people living?" I mean, it's a different German world. Wikipedia, I believe, is <laughs> still. <laughs> I've probably got time for one more question. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> There is actually a user on English Wikipedia called the Department of Redundancy Department. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who I, I'm so, uh, it's a shame he isn't here. <laughs> anyway, I think it's that's time. To his name to like D -O -R -D. Mm. Yes, and his rationale is that Department of Redundancy Department is too hard to type on a tablet. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps there's too much redundancy. <laughs> anyway, um, that will be it for these, uh, this sideshow. Um, I'll move on to... Uh, to um, Pepo, or uh, uh, what's what it's uh, yeah. So, 
I hope this, this will work and you will hear me speaking. Um, I noticed some speakers have the tendency to speak not to the audience but to the wall when they present slides. Um, I hope this is not going to happen this talk, but if I do, please just make me aware of that. I might be talking to the wall. I would be rather be talking to you because but sometimes this happens. Um, my name is Katrina. I'm active on Wikipedia for seven years now um, under the username Pupulkurus which is some, uh, somehow not pronounceable. <laughs> but when I typed it in, I didn't ever think that somebody would want to pronounce it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I am an admin also on, on the German Wikipedia. And um, everything that I'm going to say is a highly um, personal or subjective perspective. So And maybe something is more centered on German Wikipedia than on your Wikipedia, but I think um, some things uh, can be generalized. Okay, so I want to start with some thoughts on editing Wikipedia. So how does it actually work? Usually you go about and you choose your topic. You research this topic once you've chosen it. You find some information and you organize this information in some ways. So you classify, you um, decide which is important, which is rather unimportant. And then, this is the creative bit, you come up with a nice appropriate wording, how to put this information you've gathered into nice sentences in encyclopedic articles. And last bit, which is also very important, and <coughs> um, you add references, you add imagery, you um, add a bibliography, further web links, and so on. All that stuff is rather time consuming. So this is not something which you do just like you go about on your mobile, but something where you sit somewhere um, behind your books and um, spend a lot of time. And also, apart from the time, you will need access to information resources such as libraries or online databases. And you need a computer, obviously, and this needs to be connected to the internet. So now I come to the Virginia Woolf bit, which was the um, title of this talk. Uh, she wrote an essay which is called A Room of One's Own. Uh, she uh, lived in, was born in the end of the 19th century, died in 1941. She was an English fiction writer and intellectual. And um, I think she was a key person in the women's movement in the 20th century as well. Um, this essay, which is called A Room of One's Own, was published um, in 1929. It's about women fiction writers. And she asked the question, why was there never a female Shakespeare? So why do we not have famous women writers in history? And she tries to discuss several limitations that women writers might uh, experience in their life and that um, would hinder them from becoming famous fiction writers in the first place. And she finds some reasons or some points which are these impediments. And first of all, women need to have access to education. So at her time, um, women had did not have access to higher education or universities. That was only um, where people who were able, women were usually not able to attend universities at all. Um, also, she found that women writers would need financial means of their own. So like I being independent from their husband or from their parents, funding them. They would need spare time for writing. And they would need their own designated working space. So this is basically what this essay is about. And just to remind you, it's from 1929. Actually, I find this wha what she found in this essay is quite similar to what um, I talked before about editing Wikipedia because it's rather time consuming and you need access to information and you need equipment and you need a connection to the internet. That's not so much different from the requirements which Virginia Woolf found in 1929 for women fiction writers. And I think just as in 1929, women also today often lack the time and their own dedicated workspace 
and sometimes also the equipment. Many women, for example, have to use the computers of their husbands <laughs> or, ha or their children, or they have to go to public um, accessible um, spaces like libraries. And uh, at the same time, they bear still the greater part of household cho chores. They have to attend to the children. Um, even though we regard ourselves as quite equal and um, feminist movement is something of the past, if you look at the facts, it's still the women who do the washing up, who do the cleaning, um, the laundry, um, get the kids into bed, and so on. But still, at the same time, um, women are expected today to have full-time employment to earn their own money, and um <coughs> so this all adds up to um, very little available spare time. So maybe in the end it's not really surprising that um, women are not so active on Wikipedia because they just don't have the spare time which you need to do that. As I said, you need to sit there, immerse yourself in um, the topics and do some research, you spend time coming up with the wording and so on. <coughs> but now you could say there are other projects where there are women who are active on the internet and they are highly successful. So have a look at those projects. First thing that came to my mind and which has often been mentioned by friends, female friends of mine who are active on other internet projects than Wikipedia, when I asked them, the, what are you doing on the internet? They told me, oh, I'm on Pinterest. <laughs> and I, I don't know, do you know Pinterest? No? Okay. <laughs> so Pinterest is a, is a photo community. It's a... Um, I'm lacking the proper English word. <laughs> uh, it's a curator, curating site, so you don't actually add your own content. You can add your own content, but you can also group content of others. So you can basically take images which you find anywhere on the internet, put that on a on a pin um, message wall on Pinterest, and um, show it to other people. So it's basically a sort of classifying images, um, putting headlines on it, putting comments to it, and you can send links around. And actually, 80% of Pinterest users are women. It's a highly popular site. Another um, project on the internet which is used by women, 59% users are women, is Twitter. I think you all know Twitter. Don't have to explain that. <laughs> Another project which I think all of you know or have heard about is Facebook. 57% of Facebook users are actually women, so that's more than half. And there are numerous other projects which I do not um, go into detail, such as food blocks swap communities. Or do you know what swap communities are? That's people swapping items such as chocolate cakes or biscuits or plants. <laughs> Barbie dolls, I, I heard of one community where they produce unique Barbie dolls, uh, something like, for example, the medieval Barbie or the dinosaur Barbie, and they swap them. Um, they are do-it-yourself communities where you can uh, show things that you have done yourselves, for example, um, with Ike IKEA um, furniture, you have improved the IKEA furniture, or you build up things from IKEA furniture, and you post on the internet about this, and you give some explanations on how to do that. On, the, on these communities, there are mainly women actually active. <coughs> in the UK, we have Mum's Net. Yes. Which is a huge, uh, That's true. Parenting, parenting websites yeah. are very, very popular with um, young parents, and it's mainly the, the female parents who are actually active on these. It's forums, it's blogs, but also, and it's all intertwined. So. The parenting community will also have a Pinterest board and will have a Facebook site and people move back and forth. So I found these um, projects have something in common in that they are all visually appealing, maybe with the exception of Twitter, which I personally find not very visual appealing. Um, they do not require much time to edit, so you can do it just as you go along. You can do it from a mobile device, you can do it just in the five minutes while you're waiting for the potatoes to be cooked or while you wait somewhere in the queue. <coughs> uh, they are multitasking friendly. You can do them while you do something else. <laughs> Maybe sitting in front of the telly or, or whatever you have to do. Um, and they are all means to express your personality. So you can talk about yourself. I call that me-pof. <laughs> so <laughs> like my point of view 
who am I, you can express that. And also they are showcases of your creativity. You can show um, that you come up with catchy phrases on, on Twitter, you can show your nice pictures um, on Pinterest or things that you found um, when you uh, produce something yourself. That could be bakery, that could be knitting, that could be plant arrangement or whatever. This is completely different to editing Wikipedia. <laughs> I think you will all agree. That's 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 what I think as well. So there are some ideas. Uh, one would be make Wikipedia more visually appealing, and I know that there's a lot of um, thought going into that aspect already. Um, one good attempt at this um, this aspect is the new tea house. I think it has is specifically designed to be visually more appealing. I um, attended a session about. Um, message walls, so an improvement of the talk pages, which would more look like Facebook, would a bit be a bit nicer to look at and also more intuitive to use. And I think also the visual, um, the visual editor or this Athena project will also encompass some visual improvement of Wikipedia, because I think we all agree that Wikipedia looks like maybe 2003 internet, <laughs> whereas other sites which have been created later look much more modern and um, fashy. Another idea is that when we introduce women to Wikipedia in workshops, talks, other events, so where we try to get new women editors, we should maybe stress, put less stress on editing Wikipedia articles or creating new articles, because this is the most time consuming and most um, difficult task which there is in Wikipedia, where you really have to immerse yourself, you need some spare time and you need spare capacity in your head to do it at all, and um, maybe it's easier to start with something else. So for example, some reading bits, <laughs> things you can do just while you do something else, things we ch where, where you get an immediate um, reward because you see you fix something, and we should, I think we should guide women more or also to these spaces. And if I see that there are, for example, Wikipedia classes for women in women computer centers, which are founded by Wikimedia Germany or also by the foundation, they always teach um, writing articles, <laughs> writing articles from the scratch. And we Wikipedians know that this is only a small part of what we do as Wikipedians. And I think we should lead the women to do the other things as well and see those things. Another idea is, um, that we should make women aware that you can express your personality also on Wikipedia and you can be very creative. So writing is a creative process and there are lots of other um, things you can do on Wikipedia which um, are means to express yourself, but you have to show them to people. And I think it's not obvious to people. <coughs> so, and now I hope you have more <laughs> ideas <laughs> which I can pen down and put on the slides um, so you can read those <coughs> afterwards in the internet as well. Thank you. I will try to get that across to other people. I think in the back. Oh, hi. Um, I just wanted to contribute here because I think we're, I spoke with you briefly in the hallway. Um, I tried writing a new article because I really was not interested in um, correcting typos in articles and stuff like that. And I didn't want to get into a flame war with, uh, with somebody about changing a phrase in an article or something. So I wrote an article about uh, a 19th century woman, and it happened to be um, one of the few red links that is articles not written in the Anglican church calendar. And I submitted it after looking online for a bunch of sources, and I thought it was a perfectly accessible stuff. It got bounced twice, and between the first and second time, I lost my Wikipedia password. Um, I, you know, three times I've gotten new Wikipedia passwords because I have other responsibilities. I don't have children. I have a father and six dogs to take care of. And um, 
these guys who bounced this, one guy, well, first of all, who knows if they care about religious stuff at all. Um, one guy did a really great, really, really long article about a bridge because he's an engineer. Another guy did an article about um, pop culture uh, video games. And here I am trying to do the backfill on a, a historic woman who is important enough that somebody considered putting her on the Anglican church calendar, but, uh, well, she's, she's dead. And I don't know her. I'm not British. Um, and whoever her successors are are probably busy doing what she was doing, helping the poor and stuff like that. And like, I just lost interest because hmm. I, you know, it was very clear from both guys who bounced my article that it, it, it didn't meet any of the easy failure c criteria on Wikipedia, but it was very easy for them to get their stats up by bouncing their article. Um, and, you know, who, don't ask, don't tell. Um, I am not involved anymore because my article got bounced a couple times and I really didn't know how to submit it through somebody who would care that the stuff is missing. Um, I know it was in a couple of portals, but it's really hard to wiggle on through and figure out how to get a new article submitted through people who might have an interest in actually putting it up. Yeah, I, I totally... These guys who are just, you know, doing I their stats. Yeah, I, I totally... <laughs> Concise uh, dictionary of English biography. Yeah. Um, does the woman have references on the, uh, on the uh, website? Uh, <coughs> yes, she does. Yeah, I, I, I cited them. them. Yes, Maybe I did. Maybe because I'm an experienced editor from the English Wikipedia. Yeah, what's the, what's the article? So she it, was, it was it was a woman yeah. by the name of Elizabeth Farrar. Um, F E R A R D. And I just looked it up. It you know, still is the, is the is the red link. All the uh, there's a big portal, Anglican uh, portal, and uh, uh, of the Anglican calendar, all the saints, or most of the saints that <laughs> don't have pages yeah. um, are all women, or were mostly women. I, I um, think you, you so got some people aware about exactly. this, this problem yeah, now, problem. and I hope um, there will be somebody who will um, uh, read your article and, and, and try to help you bring it in that sort of um, shape that um, others will think it fit to enter the encyclopedia. Yeah, there's, a, there's a one thing to, you know, like just pop up an article and that gives people an opportunity to edit it. Hmm. Um, whereas, you know, bouncing it because there are insufficient citations um, means that it, you know, hasn't been there for over a year. That's very um, discouraging, somebody, yes. Somebody's, uh, somebody's stats look better because they processed another submitted article I, I think we have to move on okay. to other questions yeah, now because there are other people who want to contribute here. I think you were next. Yeah, um, in the rotation store, and then the Wikipedia panel yesterday, one of the top five motivations that they cited was the ability to be creative in articles and to dump something through what you edit. And my question is, why don't you think um, women five out of ten um, in the Wikipedia are creative? Um, I, I think it, this is not the, the 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 question was um why do people or why do women n do not find it apparent that it's a creative process to write Wikipedia articles? I think um or the th the reason why I think this is not that obvious is the stress on neutral point of view actually because people um are always afraid that they um that they violate Wikipedia guidelines and that they are that what they write is not neutral enough, or that if they write very in a very neutral, very um, fact-based way, that this would not be some some uh, contain something of their their personality. I have the I have the impression that women more have the desire to to express their personality than than men do. Yes, m that might be stereotype, but this is what uh, what I take from my experience and from what I heard from other other people's experiences. Yes, uh, so the personality space in Wikipedia is, is the user pages and not the articles. I totally agree. But um, in, in all the brochures, all the documentary I read, 
um, which are given out to women who are who we try to get as new editors, uh, they are always guided to the article name space, and it's never mentioned that there is a huge user space where you can um, add uh, nice stickers to your page, you can talk to each other, you can talk <coughs> about things, you can express your opinion about things, you can get into debates. So your personal view is very much um, worth it or valued in, in Wikipedia, actually. So it's not all about writing in a very neutral, neutral very much fact-based way, as it is in the article namespace. Definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you, but I think peop women do not um, know this, and we should tell them. This is my, my message, <laughs> really. Um, I don't think it's a matter of uh, editor retention, but of uh, uh, editor acquisition. <laughs> so we try to get new editors, and we try to get um, mainly <coughs> female new editors, and I think we keep on telling them the wrong things about Wikipedia. So we should be more enticing. So the incentive is wrong. <laughs> Definitely, definitely, to everyone, but I think uh, women might need a different approach to entice them, yes. I think they're on the left. So what about like cover projects? Or so a lot of women might be more interested in working with files, like on comics or in business books, things like that. But are they able to? Like, what's the role? Is there a role? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, all the all the brochures and documentation I have seen was mainly um, targeted at Wikipedia. So I don't know what other other sister projects of which Wikipedia do oh, to um, to get new women um, editors. Um, but definitely, um, especially Commons could be uh, could be interested in to women who are maybe more interested in pictures sharing visual content, but on the other hand, especially commons is very difficult, I think, <laughs> to get into in the first place. So I think the upload visit is a, is a great um, uh, improvement, but um, there still needs a lot to be done to make it really simple and easy, understandable, intuitive for new editors yeah. or new users. The upload um, wizard confuses me. <laughs> I think it's better than before, but it's, it could be even better. Yes. All the protests and the user pages and the other things, that's what they're working on and for everybody. It seems like that will help you define the other parts of the thing. Can I just say something about this particular problem that the lady mentioned? It's I think one way to solve this if you if you put up an article about some something quite rare like that and it gets bounced in the news, it's one way is to just go to find a similar sort of article and find the people who are Yes. Or go to the project page or portal page. That's that's uh, true, and I deliberately n did not mention that fact yeah. because I I deliberately want to to raise um, some awareness that there are other facts yeah. than the atmosphere. I think we are quite aware of the bad atmosphere and what it causes and how it discourages new editors and women especially. But I think there are other things as well, and this is why I chose not to include that. I, I
very large uh, sports equipment. Uh, and uh, you know, that's play, the play with admins is a, is a much higher yeah. proportion of ad women admins than of women only sports. Yeah, so that's uh, true. I'd also just like to mention, you know, the people come and say, uh, you know, I'd be quite sure that reading that article was misleading or whatever. Mm. It's not because it's a woman. No, no. no. Pokemons? <laughs> so I, I wouldn't know that women are particularly into Pokemons, but <laughs> but I totally agree that uh, notability rules uh, could also be uh, an impediment for for women. Yeah, definitely. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's true, but I don't know. Exactly. I don't know either, but I I suppose that that could be the case. I, I do agree with some points you made, not with everything. Um, I do not think that Pinterest is only hyped by some uh, class A bloggers, which are male, <laughs> and, uh, but... Yes and no. As I said, I actually, I, I came to include Pinterest in this presentation just because friends mentioned it to me. And on only after they mentioned it to me, I did some, some research on Pinterest and I realized that there was all this hype about it and that this percentage was actually quoted everywhere. But I actually got uh, got onto Pinterest, or I, I don't have an account, but I looked at it and I was always, or again and again, referred to Pinterest by, by friends of mine who are, who are female and who are active on Pinterest and said, oh, look at this, that's great, and I set up a new board and uh, please have a look at it and post it. And so I, I think it's not only a hype, but it's actually there. And what you said about the bad atmosphere, I totally agree that this is the major main problem of women, women staying in Wikipedia. But I think the surface is what um, is makes the difference for people or for women entering into Wikipedia. So I think <laughs> once they entered into Wikipedia at the first place, then they will encounter the bad atmosphere. But they don't <laughs> come to that point <laughs> because they don't even start to do it. <laughs> and this is what I was um, trying to, to highlight in some, some areas. <laughs> I think we can agree that it was the kind of stuff that um, it was the kind of stuff that if it was a normal article you hadn't gone through that process. If you just put it in main space, no one would have been able to delete it. It was the kind of formatting issues that if you don't don't know wiki code would take you hours, but if you do, somebody could have cleaned it up in two minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just yeah. follow up to that point. Yeah. So it's, 
So Did maybe I can ask just a question to the audience. How many of you have been active on the Tea House page? Or how uh, do you know the Tea House page? <laughs> That's not not so many actually. Well, actually, in recent, uh, yeah. 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 Well, I, I wanted to make um, a little bit of a comment. Maybe it has to go um, with what uh, Tom Moore said, and now I've lost my train of thought. Um, well. I mean, this issue came up months ago, and so my inclination was to just kind of network, but it, it, it was very hard for me to network on Wikipedia because I have a limited amount of time, and I put a bunch of stuff in my Hotmail box, which has like 10,000 things that I don't get to because I have other things to do in my life, and so it, it's really hard for me to keep drilling down. So uh, I went to like a, a, a Wiknik. Yeah. No you know, Actually, you na well, now I remember what, what I was thinking was with, with Tom's <laughs> comment. Um, years ago, I used to work uh, for a bureaucratic agency in this very city. Um, and one of the reasons for the really uh, abstruse language um, is that um, some people are judged by statistics. And when you, you know, everybody in here, well, many people here might know about how um, Dickens, um, one of the reasons why he wrote really long books was he got paid by the word. <laughs> um, in terms of um, bureaucrats, some bureaucrats might get paid by the word, but a lot of them get judged by how much they process. And bouncing is considered processing, even if the bouncing is for silly reasons. And for me, I used a template of somebody else's page and then tried to mark it up, thinking I was new. Apparently, that wasn't the thing to do. And then it got bounced to somebody who probably, one, didn't care, and who, you know, it looked like bouncing was the easiest thing and got the stats up. That's definitely so the case. I think all this um, reverting and bouncing things stuff is sometimes like people are gaming. So this is an attitude which some, some people adopt. They don't really look into things and they easily could have could, uh, could have um, improved your article probably and just uh, put it into the space where it would belong. But instead they, they chose to revert it because it's the easier thing and because you got to sort of um, get credit points for um, doing a lot of reverts. But... Um, no, no, they're not evil. They are, uh, definitely have good intentions. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Something like that, what should be said is, look, there's still some things to fix here. We, we would like, and perhaps you would also like, to fix these minor things before we make the article live. If you don't want to do it, do that fixing. You c we can probably put this live. You know. Yeah, or, or guide, guide her to somebody who would we help should, her. We should really yeah, and that other people can fix it. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to, uh, to get two, two last comments discussed and would uh, ask you to, to maybe move that discussion to the coffee break. I think it can go on for some hours. <laughs> so. But I think we have to understand that the process we're talking about here has a backlog of about a thousand articles, and it's there are only like maybe twenty people working on it. Okay, so how do you put it? Worthy, worthy this worthy isn't worthy really, really the most really relevant feature to talk of the of the media. No. Yeah. no.
So maybe this is the general problem of this specific procedure, which I do not know actually. We do not have that in the German Wikipedia, so I, I'm not aware of that. Uh, so are, are there any more comments on, on the female Wikipedia editing topic? Take that as last one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take that as great last words. Thank you. <laughs>